Hi, I'm Michael Buffer here, and you are watching Lights Out. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out, proudly sponsored by Spartans Law. I'd like to be joined by Mr. Adrian Martin down here at the new Peacock's Gym. Uh, I'm alright, Adrian. How you doing, mate? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Not too bad. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, I dropped this. I like this, though. I like the microphone. You do know we're going to have to like go back and forth with the microphone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, just let me know when you want it. Actually, you do me a favour by holding it because it is a bit of a ball lick trying to reach out and do interviews at the same time. Yeah. Speak of the games. It's been a few weeks out now since the last fight. You fought for the uh, fought for the Southern Area title. Very, very good fight. 50-50 fight that could have gone either way. Um, thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, I watched it back and... Um, I just, I'm a bit disappointed in myself. I'm not going to lie. Obviously, so it was a big opportunity. It's, it, it's a big opportunity, and it's, uh, it's heartbreaking, uh, not getting, not getting the result. But um, watching about this, things I've got to work on. Uh, I wasn't busy enough. You know, I, lots of positives. My head movement was fantastic. My defensive work was brilliant. But you don't score points defending shots and slipping shots. You score, you score points by throwing more and landing more. So. There was a lot of positives in it, but the, you know that unfortunately, um, I just let myself be outworked and and well, you know making those positive defensives and everything. You don't really re register that you're getting caught with with little stinging shots or, or whatever. You, you're not really registering them, and uh, and as a result, I just let myself. Uh, I let too many rounds slide after such uh, the first few rounds I started so positively I, I got a bit too comfortable I think and, uh, and just sort of switched off but fair play to Lewis I won't take anything away from him um, you know he, he, he worked hard for that and, and he, deserved, he deserved the win so uh, well done to him and good luck to him fighting I think it's on the 4th of December he defends the southern area so I hope he, hope he does that and moves on to, to bigger things and I look forward to being back out in action and, and fighting for it again myself and winning it. That was your first fight in literally two years. Literally. First fight back, yeah. you fought for a title. Was it a case of looking at that opportunity and thinking it was too good to pass? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think... Um, I think that's just part of my character. Sometimes I can be a bit rushed into things. I probably should have done like everyone else did and have a have a, a come back into it fight and then go for the area title. But the same thing was for him. He you know he had a, a long time out of the ring as well. So I can't really use that as an excuse. We both went in with the same advantages and disadvantages. Um, he just he just turned up on the night. And I, I can only give credit where credit's due. But um, yeah, two years out of the ring is a long time, and I definitely think there's there's an element of, the, of that ring rust that I, I guess I suppose that that plays a factor. But physically, I was in the best shape of my life. I just think I wasn't really anticipating how mentally exhausting ten rounds was going to be, and it was it was the mental fatigue of the lockdowns and and everything that I think really played a bit of a factor on me. But you know, I, 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 we put on a, a cracking fight. I mean, it was brilliant. Crowd were going nuts. Ten rounds just at it from start to bell. You know, you couldn't ask for more if you're a fan. So I'm just happy to have been a part of that. And I know what I'm capable of now. And I know that with a few adjustments, this level, I can, I can breeze past it and go to the next level after that. So I, I'm only taking this as a positive rather than as a negative. And then, do you know what? I don't talk about it a lot, uh, but the lockdowns were hard. Were hard on me, very, very hard on me. Uh, I lost a lot of things in those lockdowns. I, I battled with uh, being on the brink of bankruptcy. Uh, had a terrible breakup. Um, it, it, my head, I, I experienced depression for the first time in my life, but badly, badly, you know, going through days where I was just thinking, driving, and I'm thinking, you know, I, all I've got to do is go into the next lamppost or, or bollard, and, and that's it, it's done. Um, it was a terrible, terrible mindset to be in, you know, but I was just a man without purpose at the time. Uh, and not being able to see a way out, so it was it was a really really hard time. Had some amazing experiences. I, I could, like I, I, I 
managed to go away and train overseas with, with my best mate uh, Dan. Um, and do you know what? That that little break from everything just helped me stay in a more positive mindset. And then Steve giving me the opportunity for the Southern Area title that that was huge for me, and that gave me something to work towards. So, despite everything, I had those. I had good friends and family around me that that helped pull me through. But that was mentally draining, mentally draining, and. Um, it's good that now I'm in a, in a position, but after having lost that fight and a lot of the demons that I was carrying with me, sort of more on a, I suppose, emotional side, sort of were all laid to bed. I had 120 people outside the York Hall cheering me on, giving me congratulations and commiserations afterwards. 120 people outside of the venue waiting to congratulate me and commiserate me after having lost. To everyone who was there, I've got nothing but love and appreciation for all of them. Like that, that moment is, is a moment that it makes me emotional thinking about it, but that's a moment that I'm going to take with me all my life. Um, that kind of love and respect for my people is, it's, you know what, for, for someone who went through the things that I went through in the lockdowns, that overall, that just, forget the decision, that moment there meant more to me than anything. So yeah, that was, that was amazing. That was amazing. It's good to hear now that you're coming through the other side of yeah. depression. You know, you look a lot more happier. You're looking to keep active now. Um, you're a very, very well-spoken person, and you you always say what what you what, what you want. You know, you've never really shied away from being the Adrian Martin that I know. You know, you've always called out opponents that you feel as if you could beat. One guy that you've been very vocal of is Mr. Idris Virgo. Now. Our last interview you did, you was very interested in that fight. I know quite a few fighters that have been calling out Idris Virgo. Can you tell us like what's sort of happening with that? I know you sent an offer to him. Has there been any sort of new development with yourself and Idris, Idris Virgo? He is a straight up bottle job pussy. <laughs> that is it. I have no interest in that fight anymore. Listen, at the time there was nothing going on. It was about you know seeing if I could get a fight in the lockdown. He was a ma he's a mouthy prick anyway. He's sort of disappeared off of the face of boxing lately anyway. I think the public interest in him's gone. He's not that good of a boxer. Um, his character isn't that entertaining. So it's, it's not really any. There might have been a bit of monetary value at the time. There was a bit of interest in him because he was just this cocky prick that was getting these fights in lockdown but now there's no career advancement there's no benefit to fighting him there might be some monetary benefit i very much doubt it okay he's got a good record he's unbeaten and whatever but being unbeaten doesn't in my books necessarily make you a good fighter some of the best fighters that i've shared a ring with, ring with have got losses on their records you know so it's only the anyone could be undefeated boxing journeyman anyone can be undefeated like that there's a few real undefeated fighters in this country that have done it by merit they're they're dangerous they're real they're real rare and special talents there ain't many of them so but there's a lot of top level fighters that have taken losses and fighters that are dangerous and that have got a lot more credibility so I'm not really, I, I don't really care, like, if, if they give me a good offer, you know, for like, a, a, like, do a 10 rounder, give me at least a bag around, cool, I'll fight him for that kind of money, because that's alright, a little 10 bags to beat someone, whatever, but realistically, he's, he, he's a nobody, do you know what I mean, and at the time, I'd have fought him fat, I'd have fought him at light heavyweight, I'd have fought him at super middleweight, I'd have fought him at my new weight, which is middleweight, given that I, I was a welterweight, and a super welterweight not so long ago, you know, so it is what it is. Like the the guys I fought are better than he's ever gonna be. So you know, it, it is what it is. Like he's a waste man. Uh, good luck to his career and everything. Do you know what I mean? But he was giving it all the big and on social media. It went to nothing. I've got no more interest. He's he's got no benefit towards me. I'm further in my career than he's ever gonna be. He just he's got a TV deal because he was on Love Island. Fuck that guy. <laughs> But before I, before I let you go, Adrian, because I know you've been here quite a while, um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, just uh, tell the fans what's next, what can we expect to see perhaps at the early stages of uh, 2022? 
So I was scheduled to fight at the end of November, but due to an injury, I've had to um, had to pull out. It's unfortunate. I hate pulling out of fights, and without <laughs> without uh, without any better sense, I would fight injured. But I've got to listen to to my coaches and my management, and actually, I want to go in there and give my people the best performance of myself. You know, I don't want to go in there in a half fast performance with an injury. So 2022, we're going to come back, look to take on someone someone decent, six or eight rounds as a little comeback after the area title fight. And then let's go for it again. Let's, whoever's got the belt or if the belt's vacant, let's go for it or whatever, whatever other opportunities present themselves. But I'm game. I'm here to fight. I'm not shy to fight anybody. So let's do it, man. That's 2022 is going to be a big year. New direction, new focus. Got a great team around me. Yeah, big things coming. Well, we definitely look forward to seeing you back out in the ring in 2022. Thank you very much for your time. A pleasure, as always, and yes. fun speaking to you. Thank you very much. Adrian Martin, thank you very much. Thank you for talking to Lights Out, mate. Thank you, thank you very much. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.